Yeah, yeah, hello. Yeah, now this is a new um, bank. This is called the Smart Bank. We have reason why it's called Smart Bank because it has some amazing, um, or I was called smart features. Now, everything, almost everything on this bank can be um, fixed from the admin. You can actually change the phone number. So your bank um, logo, your most of the details there can actually be changed from the from the from the admin so you don't really have much to worry yourself if you know little or not or nothing about um html you have no issue it got you covered you can still change your your front end to something else if you want but by that the the admin might not be able to fit it so we've done a good job here but mind you this um this is just for research purpose so just for training we actually build this in a way so whosoever has a product to build or has um, a software a web application to build that is kind of similar to something like this so you can actually go into our code and see the way we're able to um fix up the code you see almost everything almost every code we have we added comment to it so it's something that when you're visiting the code you can actually see how everything was done so here what we were able to do here is more like a bank but not it's not a real-time bank so it's not really doing any real time transaction but we just want to show you how a banking system is very likely to work so this is mainly for educational purpose so first thing that i'll do here now is i will log you into the admin i'll go to the admin now this is the admin i'll log into the admin i want to give you a quick run over of the whole stuff now this is the admin um um login board now i click on login now it has login now this is how it looks in the admin there are so many um smart features we've actually um tried to add up on this particular script it looks like the 4d but there are so many amazing things about it now um when you come here i'll show you some new features before i give you a quick run over of the whole stuff we have something called um bank management here which when you click on it you can actually add your bank so now during um, the transfer process you're making transfer just like it is in a bank app you don't really have to you don't really have to key in the name of the bank all you need to do is that's for the admin now you know the banks um, that you can actually transfer money or if you're using it for a real life situation maybe you're running this maybe let's say for instance you're running a cooperative where people are actually using something like this now you want them to transfer to so 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 person so 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 person bank can actually be here we've also added a, a, a provision for um what's it called beneficiary so when someone make a transfer you actually select from the available banks and um whoever you send money to that you save the person's um detail as your beneficiary you can actually select that particular person and send money to the person so here you can see access bank big bank bank zenith bank let's say we want to add another bank let's say for instance echo bank now this is the name of the bank now under the region you select if it's local or international now if you select it as local when a user is making a local transaction that's where he sees this if you say that international when international trans transaction is being made it's where they will sit for this let's make it an international then we click on add bank now you can see it has been added you see during the transaction transfer process you see this bank we also echo you can still edit here if you want you can still change it back to local or you can still add as many as you want you can delete so another um exciting feature again we have in this um, aside from when you come to finance we have what we call payment method now the payment method is for digital payment maybe you're running something like a bank you want people to to pay you via um cryptocurrency via even paypal or something like that. now this is where you fit it but let's say for instance we have um let's say btc the network abbreviation let's say btc the network name is bit coin now you want your user to pay you with bitcoin the wallet address so now your wallet address should be here if for instance it's something like um something like paypal your paypal email is what will be here then you just rate it name it paypal then for the wallet icon i'll just take an icon i have on my have this icon here i'll just pick it i click on add new that has been added as you can see I'll add another one. Let me say um, ETH. I'll name that Ethereum. I 
I don't know if I spelled that correctly. Let me just leave it like that. Let's say this is the wallet address. Then for Ethereum, I can actually take this. I have an Ethereum logo here. Actually pick it. I click on add new. Now you see during transaction, if you want to make a digital payment, this will be there. Now you can actually, you don't need to delete a particular um coin or a particular um, digital payment method if you don't want to make use of it. You can actually come here. You can see the status is marked good. You can actually unmark it. You can see the intune display. So you don't really have to delete. You can mark it back. So that's a nice one. Another we have um for you we still have the transactions under the configure we have the settings now under the settings this site name wherever you enter here we take over the site name on the ui that's on the front end design if you're using your own front end or maybe you're using paypal or you enter there here will definitely not display anyway then um we have um the bank name the address the email we have the OTP enabled and disabled. Now, when this OTP, it, um, OTP is enabled, it performs two functions. It helps um, facilitate the OTP that may be sent during transaction if that is actually applied for that particular user. Then secondly, if it's enabled during registration, sorry, not registration, during login, if it's enabled, then the last step of the login and OTP will be sent to the user. Then the user will have to get the OTP from their email and put it back and put it um, to enable the user to be able to log in. So if this is actually um, disabled, that function will definitely not going to work. Here we also have a transaction charge. If you want to charge your user a particular percent of every transaction that they are making, this is where you enter it. So there will be more like a bank charges. Then the logo here, whatever logo you enter here is logo that will take over the logo in the email, the logo in login form, the logo on the front end, the logo on the user's dashboard. So this is the general logo. So that is a nice one. And that thing I also um, like to show you is the account types. Now, when you click on account type, this is actually useful during registration. Useful during registration. So we have current account, professional account, savings account. We can actually create another account type. You can name it fixed deposit. Guys, if your bank actually provide that particular feature, fee deposit account. So the registration, all these account type will be displayed. Then the user will choose the account they want to. Then another thing again we have, which is very, very important, it's um, the transfer codes. Now this is important. Now under the transfer code, you can see we have the IMF, we have the um, COT, IMF, IPN, SARS, I don't know what those mean. I'm just, let's say for instance now, there is something like, um, let's say, a, a tax code. You want your user to pay tax or they have to send you their tax code or something of that nature. So all you need to do is um, just create the, you can just name the code, um, you can just name it tax and um, there are two options here. You can make it auto, you can make it static. Now, if you make it auto, what that actually means is that making it auto, what that actually means is that during a particular transaction, that is when the user is about to make um, initiate a particular transfer, if it's auto, the code will be automatically sent to the user and the user will have to go to their email, they get the code and facilitate the transaction. Now, if the admin don't want it like that, if you don't want it that way, you can as well make it static. Now, making it static means that the administrator will be the one to provide the code to that particular user. You get it? The administrator will now be the person to provide the code for that particular user. So it all depends on how you want the system to run. You can have as many codes as possible. Like here, we have four codes. You can make it five, six, seven, eight. If you want 100 codes, you can add it there. The system is actually able to carry up that. So if we include that passcode and we click on apply, we made this auto, you can just come here and maybe I, I can delete this that I have here. So these are just the four codes we have. So this is how it is now. Um, then here we also have our broadcast. Um, okay, those are actually new features. No, let me try, I've already make, made the registration. So now I'll try to 
make a login now this is the user user front end i click on login now this is how it looks like now login you can log in with either email or your account number so that is no issue the admin the user can log in either with their email or with their account number so i'll enter my email address and I'll enter my password Now it's asking me for the pin i've entered my pin now it's asking me for otp now the reason why it's asking me for this otp is simply because if you come to finance now if you come to configure to setting you see that the otp is actually enabled where is that email otp is enabled so that's why it's actually asking me for otp so what I'll do now is I have to get the OTP. So I'll go to my email to get the OTP. Let me log into my email. You can see the OTP has arrived. This is new. You can see zero minutes to tell that it just came in now. So what can do here? 3073. So I take this 3073. I'll bring it here and um, I'll enter that. If you didn't get the OTP, you can click on resend the OTP and the OTP will resend to you. So click on submit. Now this is exactly how it looks here. This is exactly how it looks here. A lot of modifications, code written, everything perfect, working. Totally minified. Now this is the language translator with Google Translate. Now there are a lot of things we can do here. There's now provision for KYC. The statement statement now are printable in any form it's printable in excel on pdf you can still use the normal print then user profile this user profile you can't edit the details you provided to your bank so everything here is not editable only the admin can actually do that then you can change your password change your pin and there's activity log here then under the transfer, we have the domestic transfer. We have international transfer. I'll do, I'll do a transfer in some minute. Now we have minute um, monetary. Under there, we have digital deposit and card. Now under digital deposit, when you click on digital deposit, you can see we created Bitcoin, we created Ethereum. You can see the Bitcoin we created and Ethereum. Let's say for instance, there's under payment method. If you come to the admin and you come to payment method, you can actually say okay that's under payment method let's say it's called um let's say pay pal i'll just give it the same name okay um i'll just copy this abbreviation i'll say it's pp then the network name i'll say is on paper then the email for that i'll just say is pay i'll just give it anything at at um trial.com or just see okay i'll just leave it like that then um i'll select the wallet and icon so i'll just take i'll just take um this um ethereum icon for it i'll just take this ethereum just to be fast now I'll click on add new now you can see it has been added the pp that's the paper now if i come back to this user end and i i reload it you can see that's a PayPal. You can see. So let's try to make a payment. Let's say the payment is Bitcoin. We click on and now this this a the QR code is there and this is the wallet and the amount you want to pay in. Let's say um you're paying in let's say seven thousand. The amount can be in dollar, it can be in anything you will specify that in your admin settings so that you're pasting your transaction id here there so i'll just pre here so this is the conversion as a today rate in bitcoin this is a conversion of seven thousand dollars because it's on dollars in default so i click on deposit oh my network is just disappeared my network just disappeared okay that's loading My network just disappeared. I think that um, I'll try to do that again. 
I'll make this um I'll make this um fifty thousand. I'll give this as promotion ID. I'll click on deposit. Now you can see your order of this, this, this. So now when the admin confirms that um they can actually make the payment. Now when this this is the admin, under the admin, when you come to um digital deposit, this is the transaction we just made now. You can see it. So the admin can actually approve it. Now it has been approved. Now this is it. Um back to the user. Now this is um how it looks, but there's something I skip. I was supposed to let you know. Um, the email now, this is back to the email. I'll click on inbox. You can see we have two emails here. The first we did check them was the can see all the email are inbox. The first we checked there was the um login um OTP. Then we have two more email. Then this um new deposit, the deposit that was made, it's still pending. The 50,000 you can see it's pending at first. Then when the admin approves it now, it has status has changed to success. So this is how cool, wonderful this um looks like. So um another thing that was, um, I would like to show you, it has so many features that you you're gonna like. So under a transfer, okay, I'll just make a transfer. I'll just make a transfer. The KYC here. When the user comes in, the user has to upload something, a passport, a driver's license. And once that is uploaded, the admin will see that. So making a transfer, I'll show you something from the admin first. Now the admin, when you come to, oh, this is the user, this is the admin. When you come to user details, now this is the account I'm working with. I click on manage. Now this is the KYC document. This is actually an image. I actually added. This is actually an image. Then this is the user. Now the passport. The user can actually add a passport during registration. Then admin can confirm and verify. And I'm approved the account for the user to be able to log in. And when if the user skip that process, the admin can as well do that for the user. So now you can see we have different account. And you can see we have a direct transfer status now when you are when, when you opt in a user for direct transfer what that actually means that um, no code will be actually requested and when the user want to make a transfer the transfer goes straight forward without any stress now we have transfer with OTP and we have we have the third one which is a transfer with codes I will run a quick one for you there now the transfer with code is what we are um, working on here now that's what this user is activated for you can actually change that with particular user if you want to. You just do that here. So, and that thing I like to show you can debit a user, you can credit a user. If maybe some kind of mistakes were made, you can actually come to finance, that is transactions. You see the whole transaction that has been done. Then you can actually edit the transaction, the detail if a mistake was made. You can actually change the date too. If you want to so I will head back to the user part let me say I want to make an international transfer now I click on international um, oh let's make a local transfer I've not saved the beneficiary here I want to show you the beneficiary let me click on domestic transfer so I'm making a domestic transfer on the amount how much do you want to transfer before that I would like to show you the balance that is left here. You can see five hundred and twelve thousand two hundred dollars. So when you come back to transfer, click on domestic transfer. The amount, let's say twenty thousand. There is no charges here. Reason because the um, transfer charges is actually zero. When we change it, it will charge it percentage. So there is no charges for this transaction. Then you enter beneficiary details and co. But here you can actually choose your beneficiary. I've made a transfer to this, I've made a transfer to this. So you can all the beneficiary you've saved will be part of your beneficiary. 
So you can actually tick, click on any beneficiary. Okay, this is Afraid Firm. When you click on this, because it's someone you've already saved the beneficiary as, you can see it has appeared here. But if you don't want, if you don't have a beneficiary, all you do is you select the whole details and click on Save Beneficiary. And the transaction will go through and to be saved. The beneficiary will be actually saved. So the date has been gotten automatically. So the details I can say um let's say purchase of goods and um and services. Let's say you bought this from Afraid. You click on transfer. Now it's asking for IMF code. Where is the IMF code? When you come back to the admin, if you come back to the admin and you come to transfer codes, you can see that is an IMF. IMF is auto. What does that mean? Even the admin does not have it. You can try. If you don't want that, you can delete it. The admin does not have it. Where is it? It's in the email. So what the user does at this point, head over to their email. I'm here to receive it. Now the email is here to arrive. Now the reason why this email hasn't um, arrived is simply because um, I'm supposed to click get IMF. If you don't get it, you can click it as many times as you want. So hoping that it will come through within some few, within a um, couple of minutes. So um, while we're waiting for that, um, okay, I'll just check the email. Let me check if it's here. It's not yet here, but I know it's coming up soon. Now I think um, the email just arrived. It took about 30 seconds. Sometimes that might just happen. Now this is the email. You can see IMF code. Now I'll click on it. Now this is the code 2308. I copy the code. And I come here and I paste the code. I click on continue. You can see IMF code confirmed. And then now there's a progress bar now that's reading. Now it's asking for COT code. Now where is this COT code? The COT code is from the admin. This is it 2234. I copy it and um, I paste it here. Click on continue. It's asking for S A R S code. Seriously, I don't know the meaning. I just added that. Now it's 3604. So you can add as many code as you want. As many code as you want. I paste that here too. You can see contact your bank. Those um, codes that uh, won't be sent into email, they'll be using information, contact your bank. Now, this is a um, task code. So, I'll click on get task code. The email has been sent. Now, if you're checking, you can see the task code is actually here. It's actually auto. So, those that are auto will be sent to a particular email. So, While we're waiting for that um, email, I'll just go check my email to see if it has arrived. Now the task code has arrived. You can see the name Smart Business. That's what I call this, and that's what we named it. This name that sends the email that I say as Smart Business, when you come to your admin, you come to configure, click on settings. I want to show you something. You can see the Smart business is this particular bank name. Smart business is what is echoing there, so you know what your business is all about while you're doing that. So, this is the task code. If I click on it, I'll get the task code 4855. I'll copy it, I'll paste it here, and click on continue. It now is completed, 100% completed. All security system has been confirmed. Proceed with transfer.
Now you can see the transfer process is initiating. So the transfer process 15%, 20%. So we just hold while it gets to 100% and you see what happens next. Now the transfer is completed and this is the receipt. So what do you do? You can choose to save this receipt and when you click on save the receipt will be downloaded you can see here the receipt will be downloaded so you can actually download the receipt if you want or uh, you can just close this page and it goes back now if we go to the dashboard you can see there is a deduction you can see there is a deduction now the account number you're sending it the money to it's actually demo it's not moving to any bank anywhere only if the person also have an account in this particular platform that's where the money can actually be debited from yours and credited to that particular person so now if we come to statement you can see the transaction we just made purchase of goods you can see the transaction you can actually print in a Excel format if you want, it's downloaded. You can print the PDF, you can see it if you want, or you can just use your normal system print. So everything is working fine and perfect. So this is also mobile responsive. It's mobile responsive, so you have nothing to be scared of. I'll show you that. So this is the user path. You can see it's mobile responsive. You can see how responsive it is. So that's that's just it. So on the admin side, I could give you. I don't want to make this video longer than thirty minutes. It's getting too long. You can, the admin can can actually come to a user. Edit user details. This way you can actually edit user details, if you want to. Can edit user details, can change the user logo and image as the passport. You can edit some details of that particular user. The password here is encrypted, MD5 encryption, and the pin is actually encrypted. There is also card management. There's also card management. The user can apply for card and you can actually activate or deactivate, assign on, on assign the card to that particular user. Then um, another thing we're able to add is the loan management. This is loan loan management. So a user can actually apply for loan. Now these are some loan I've been testing the host process way. So user can actually apply for loan. So you can approve, you can unapprove, or you can as well delete if you don't want it. So I'll come back to the admin and um, to the user part. I'll show you the loan when the user want to apply for a loan. You can actually click on loan application. This is where they enter their details and apply for loan. Then you can check your loan status. If any loan has been approved, this way user see that particular loan. Okay. And that thing, there is a support system. There's also an FAQ. So this is just an FAQ. You can write it if you want, based on how your business operates. Then there's a messaging system. The user can actually write a message to the admin. And on the admin path, on that broadcast, this is the message. You can see the user message, and they actually reply to it by entering information here. So there is also a news system. You can actually, this is the current news. You can actually put some news. You can say, let's say, hey, um, we giving bonus for every new registered account. So you can just say this in news. We are giving, let's say, 50% bonus. You can just click on save. 
now you can see now when the user on the user end on the front of there you can see the news so this is how this particular one is there is still a lot of it's still open for further development and um, further assessment so with time on um, i believe this should be able to solve what you want um, let's say for instance um, you're in arabic for instance this, this will be the last day because i don't understand arabic now you can see everything has changed to arabic I don't know where is my logout. Okay, that's she original. I'm clicking. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time. God bless.